What is up, everybody? Thrilled to be back with you today. I got some of the legends again in here. So I got Danny BR, who's the official flip master. I've got Sean from Comics and Crypto, the comic wizard. I've got Spencer from Comics and Crypto, Mr. 200 IQ. And I have the king of VV, Lewis Morgan with me. So what's up, guys? Going on. Yeah, man. <laughs> Loving those nicknames or what? I'll, 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 I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, Spencer's glowing. <laughs> yeah. I wish. Yeah. You locked out with your one, man. <laughs> <laughs> so how did everybody do in the drop did anybody land nope no, nothing for me Big failure. <laughs> it's been like two months <laughs> yeah yeah the last one was deadpool so that was december mid-december i think so yeah that was the last one i said to uh, <laughs> yeah my, my cousin got he got lady in the tramp 1953 off the drop which is the actual book release date which is pretty cool I think oh, that's epic. was the yeah. movie release, so that's pretty cool. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah, my brother got three sixty-five. Uh, Daisy and Donald Duck, which was kind of nice too. And uh, and he's got, I don't know what he's doing, but he's getting these drops now. Like I don't know if you guys have seen Johnny Dunn's channel, but he does like the timing, and he's just got mm-hmm. it down to a science. So that's what my brother is doing now. He just does one click. Yeah, I'm gonna have to change I've actually found the most success I have with one click. I don't spa- unless it's the blind box. I, I I don't risk it. Sorry, unless it's you know when it counts down. I don't click it then. I don't spam then. I actually just click. But um, yeah, I, I've I've seen more success just tapping than spamming. Yeah, no kidding. Same. And I just wanted to kind of comment quickly. Danny, you came on the show recently and talked about you know the relationship that uh, you know you had with Lewis and and all the you know different. Uh, nfts that you guys captured early on and and i think lewis you're 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 doing pretty well now man i mean i keep seeing those sub 100 rizzos and uh you know how are you feeling about all these purchases you made in november good i haven't bought anything in a while to be fair nothing really tickles my fancy as i said i came on here for a couple of things and then really i'm just waiting out for for pokemon so i'm just yeah. kind of sit back and relaxing i mean i've got a few things that i'm probably going to get rid of on the next pump um to be fair um but yeah no it's good can't complain we we i got in at a great time and and as i said me and danny just kind of met online and we just started cleaning up <laughs> yeah yeah it's crazy oh, it was absolutely wild. Go for it. yeah it was absolutely wild when we uh when we first started he was just like yeah we're just we were just buying everything though weren't we like because we didn't really know he said right i don't know what to get i was like well just get whatever you want obviously sub 100 he's like he just said buy everything that you can buy and then we sort of narrowed it down to thinking, well, we don't need this. Do we actually want this? Uh, but initially, yeah, we were just buying everything, weren't we? Well, I mentioned to you before, my first ever purchase was a 140 volt. And the reason yeah. I bought the 140 volt is because I went in, I want to get sub 100s. And people were telling me online that the first 41, you know, they're exclusive. You couldn't get them. So to me, sub 100 was sub 141. So I went in with like a, a 140 because it's the sub 100 available to the public. So, and then obviously I moved to actual sub 100s, but to me, you know, that's, there's still a case to be made for that. That's interesting. Cause a lot of people look at it like a sub 150 or a sub 100, but you're right. Technically a 141 is the number 100, right? So that's, that's an interesting analysis. Mm. So question for all of you guys, uh, this one's a little bit complicated, but there's been a lot of different opinions in the community right now because they came out with the article talking about first appearance and first edition and you know a lot of people were talking about how they only care about first to the blockchain other people were saying well no i care about what vv's tag means the first appearance well uh, you know or other people are saying well i care about the different mediums so for instance if you know uh hulk let's just say appeared in a comic first on vv is that technically the first appearance on the blockchain this five dollar comic okay so these are the kind of the confusion and the questions going around in the community and i was just wanting to pick everybody's brain today to kind of clear up uh and give people some direction uh because right now it kind of seems directionless uh so what's everybody's take on that article i'll start um yeah i mean i think that there there will be like a niche part of the community kind of like the more the more technical part of the community that will go for, you know, first technically on the blockchain, you know, more of those like technicalities. Um, but the mass majority of the user base on VB, um, you know, they, they aren't necessarily like blockchain savvy and, 
you know, they're, they're coming in as, as collectors and they're not looking at the metadata like and the actual blockchain data. So I think they're going to live by what's on the metadata on the, on the VB app. So they're going to see a first appearance and they're going to, they're going to assume that that is the first appearance. So I think just by, by virtue of the mass majority of people believing that way, I, I think that's generally the way things are going to go and, and where people are going to value it the most. Right. Yeah. Um, if you, I say we were looking at, uh, obviously the numbers that they're minted on, on the blockchain. I mean, we did, we did a thing with the sub 100 Todds, didn't we? Where, I mean, a few of us have sub 100 Todds, but we looked back when they were at first being minted because we thought, oh my God, if this is like the first on the actual blockchain, this is going to be huge. Um, it would add, no, add another layer of value to the Todds. Um, but we actually looked into it. Um, and I think mine's number 74 and Lewis, yours is number 72. And both of ours were, I think mine was in the 4,000s minted and I'm not sure what yours was, but um, yeah, they were definitely not matching up with the, with the actual data on VV. So that was interesting to see. Interesting. And I think that's, you know, interesting because a few people reached out to me on that same note and said, well, you know, does this mean that my sub 100, you know, no longer has the value? And I, my, my counter to that was, you know, there could be tiered accessories coming in the future. So for instance, like a sub 100 Todd, you get a, like a blue cape hypothetically, or there could be other things that people see it as an exclusive category. I mean, cause how difficult it is to source something, you know, 60 mints within or, or a little more, cause I took the first 17. So let's just say like around 80 mints within the first uh, NFT on VV is still difficult to get. And then on top of that, if you were at the store, you had to be very early to buy that at retail. So I think those are some elements against that. But I, I do think it's a bit concerning if that is the case. You know, I, I going back to your, your question earlier, I think anything that's not written on the metadata is going to have to have a really strong movement behind it, you know, for people to really believe in it and for it to really fall through. Mm. So, I mean, for collectors in general, and for comic books, for example, there's so many different ways that they've differentiated value over time. Like uh, at first it was, it was just comic books and then they started grading comic books and that wasn't enough. And then they started doing newsstand copies and newsstand copies are basically barcodes in the bottom of corner of comic books. And those were actually on newsstands outside. So they, you know, they're, they're at mercy of the weather. And if you get a 9.8 graded comic that's was standing in the mercy of the weather, that's a pretty big deal. Um, and then there's Canadian price variants very very significant so over time people have differentiated value i don't think that i'm not really discouraged at all um if the number is different on the blockchain compared to what's on vv um because in in my eyes that's what vv originally had these numbers potentially minted on go chain right is that right does anybody know that spencer yeah. you know yeah. yeah so i think when it was originally created that was the sequential order and i think i think that'll probably carry over but at the end of the day, people will look at different ways to differentiate value and it could increase value over time. But yeah, I think, again, I think you're going to need a really strong movement behind it for people to believe in it. Just like the Hulk comic book that you mentioned, you know, like having the first Hulk comic book, is this the first Hulk uh, NFT on the blockchain? Maybe, but again, you need a really strong movement behind it for people to really believe in it. Right. And I think there's such a clear emotional attachment for especially physical comic book collectors that if you told them, you know, come in here and buy this comic that you know is $5 in real life for 10 grand, because guess what's is the first appearance. I think that'd be a lot more difficult than to sell them on Hulk number one, as an example in the comic book world. So I agree that, you know, there's going to be a certain subset of people that will find that interesting and, you know, it'd be cool trivia in the future, but I don't know if it's going to yeah. have a mainstream movement. So I think those are all you know, exactly. Those are great points. And, you know, one thing I wanted to pick your brain about again is, does that mean then that like Rizzo, because remember they said, F Vivi said that they're basically giving FA takes to all statues going forward, but they're not going to change a few things, including like Rizzo and HQ19 and some of those sets. Um, so what could that do for their potential value in the future? Yeah, that's um, huge. Well, L Lewis, you've got both, you've got all of them. So you should probably weigh in on that. What do you think that would do if, because uh, I know if they're the only ones that have the FE tag and they're the only ones that aren't obviously statues, like they're the ones that are statues, that could potentially be a massive growth in the future. So what do you think about that? I mean, you can, you can look at it, you can look at it both ways, can't you? But at the end of the day, I think collectors do their research, like true collectors will do their research. They, they, they understand that, you know, that 
if it, well, it depends, it depends on which way it works, but they know where the value is. So FE, you know, if no one else is going to have the FE, then quite clearly that stands out as being an even better product, in my opinion, because even less people have got that. And obviously true collectors know that it was one of the first things that is on EVV or the first, you know, Batman exclusive, whatever it may be that they did. So I think it's going to only add to the value, in my opinion. So, you know, keep bringing it on. <laughs> That's how I see it. And again, I'm in a different position. If it goes up or goes down, like it doesn't really bother me. So um, I can kind of just sit back, relax and uh, see which way it does go. <laughs> it's fun to be in that position, right? And I, <laughs> and I think, you know, it's interesting because Lewis is obviously a big Pokemon collector, as you can see from his background as well. And so was I back in the day. And, you know, one thing about Charizard, for instance, being so expensive, or even other Pokemon cards were errors. So for instance, like Shadowless, you know, would add a ton more value to a card or, or, you know, first edition, or if there was something that, you know, a red cheek Pikachu, as an example, that like, there's all these little variations. And so, you know, going forward with these mistakes being cemented now in history, and Vivi just continue to add to the collectibles, like there's only what, eight to 12 of these NFTs on Vivi that are going to carry forward with these mistakes. And I think that's, you know, incredible for people that are interested in some of these OG things. So I think that's a it's really interesting to see where it's going to go. Yeah. And I think outside of that, I mean, these are the, like the first ever like Batman NFTs ever created on blockchain. And as thousands more are created over the years, these will still be the first. And even without, you know, all these special de designations, it's, it's still hugely, hugely significant. Right. And do people care about the minutia? Like for instance, you know, I look at like secret rare Spider-Man, right. And some people were saying, well, no, the common was minted like that collectible. The common was minted before the secret rare. Like that's what they're saying. So therefore, you know, X is going to be more valuable than the secret rare Spider-Man and it could take away value. But I'm like, but it's still the first Marvel NFT set. Like, I mean, as much as mm -hmm. you want to talk about that specific detail, I think people are still going to generally care about the first ever set. So same with what you're saying with black and white, like despite Todd, technically being the FA, I mean, it, you know, it doesn't, it shouldn't take away so much from Becky, Joe and Rizzo. Like they're still there with them in November of 2020. So what do you guys think about that? You know, it's, it's, it's kind of like looking at like a, like a low mint comment, right? Is it like they're being minted first, you know, compared to like a, a high mint secret rare, like that, it doesn't take away the value from the secret rare variant, but it just increases value for the low mint common, you know? So I think it's kind of, I said it the same way. Again, people are just going to try to differentiate value, um, but I don't think it'll take anything away from the more exclusive or valuable variant. It'll just increase value potentially for the, the common. Right, right. And uh, looks like some of these golden moment sets are, are coming back. I mean, I didn't expect that. And I know Danny was uh, completing a sub 100 golden moments and we had a few conversations and then all of a sudden, bam, out of nowhere, two more and, and makes me think are there going to be another 50 um, yeah. you in your pocket oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, for you i'll fucking run out of money <laughs> <laughs> uh, no it was yeah i mean to be honest my sort of um thought process and it's changed a little bit because obviously i was trying to get that first set and i was like i was that was my main goal um and then i thought well they've released these and I, to be honest i'm not gonna lie i was a little bit salty because i was like okay, well, this doesn't fit my my goal. So this is like, now I'm going to have to keep buying sub 100. So I was like, okay, well, I'll put a tweet out. And I was like, okay, well, this seems a little bit salty now. And then someone actually tweeted me saying, yeah, you just, you only care about it because you, you've got the first ones, give someone else a chance. And I was like, actually, you are right. <laughs> like I had, I had the opportunity to buy these when they were low and when they first come out. And I it was to be fair a little bit selfish on my part and i was thinking okay well actually this guy is right uh everyone deserves a chance to get a go at all of this so i'm actually taking a step back and thought yeah probably it's 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 more opportunity for everyone else so i think it's a good thing uh long term to be fair regardless so of my <laughs> it's, it's so funny because you're thinking some 100s i'm thinking utility so I'm like, I join yeah. my pot committed at this point because I, I need the whole set, the whole thing. You know, yeah. So like, yeah. have a chance at this potential utility coming to these statues. Yeah, That's like what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah there might you be an saw Ron English, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Like Ron English, you saw the same thing happen with him. You have to mm -hmm. all three sets to to get that airdrop. But have they um have have they because they haven't differentiated between the two sets, have they? Or they just put Valentine's Day. But if you look on the actual collection side of it, it still says Disney Golden Moments like as a whole blanket. So 
Do they yeah. differentiate for between that? Will, will you have to have all of them to get an airdrop or will there be an airdrop? You don't know. So it's just one of those, isn't it? You don't know. And which, what do they, which one do they add utility to if they ever do add utility? Is it all of them? Is it one of them? Because as you say, they can keep bringing out loads more Disney Gold moments and how does that add value to the rest of them? Do you mm. know what I mean? Like, you know, does it make the first ever Golden Moment more expensive? Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, but if more if more keep coming out, I would assume the first set will continue to go up in value and stay the yeah, most expensive. Definitely. Yeah, If they haven't differentiated be- between the two sets, like they've just literally just said Disney Golden Moments. Like they haven't put Series 1, Series 2. They've just put just under Disney Golden Moments. So how anyone say in five years' time comes in and says, well, they're, not, they're just going to look at the dates and say, okay, it was released within the same three months. It's the same set. Um, so there's no actual differentiation between them. But we know because we were here for it, but people that are going to come in down the line like anyone else, they're not going to know. They're just going to see it's part of the same set. Okay, I'll get all of them. Or do you know what I mean? So, it's a bit uh, of a I have to go buy them today, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still hoping they'll drop. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting, you- right? Like I, I kind of go against the grain in this where I think people with less money are going to take, like, let's just say they com- hypothetically completed the first ever Disney golden moments. I feel as though they would take the money out of the things that are less iconic, so to speak, like the skateboard or the Avengers logo, let's just say, hi- and then they would go and put that into something they, they feel as though it's more important. Like when we see the Buzz Lightyear golden moment, you know, or other things, I could see people being like, oh, I've got to choose the stuff that I think is most valuable. Like right now for me, yeah. you take that first set, I'm taking the star Wars set, Elsa, and Homer and Bart and Walt, those are like, if I had to pick, um, you know, uh, even though they, they do represent the first of their categories, I think, you know, a lot of people, what we're noticing are coming in and just buying what they're emotionally attached to in the real world. Yeah. So where do you, um, where, 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 where do you see these new, these two NFTs, these new golden moments sitting? Do you see like the lady in the tramp? Do you see that sitting what? in terms of like a Wally price over time or what, or an Iron Man or what, where'd you see it? Where'd you see them fitting in? Cause to me, I don't care about the lady and the tramp NFT. So like to me, it's probably less than, less than a, a, a Wally because it's obviously to me, it's not really that relevant, but obviously then you've got Donald the days of duck, which, you know, is obviously going to be more of a higher price point because it's so well known. So where do you guys see them all fitting in? Maybe like, you know, two, three months down the line. Yeah. I'm sort of um, torn on that because Initially, you thought you put you put all of the golden moments as a set, which is why I I think you added more value to the whole the whole lot. Like cause some of them originally, I might I might not have picked up if they weren't all together. But because they're all released within a week, you sort of like pegged that. You put them all as a set, like subconsciously. Now they've added to this. It's like, well, how far do they go? Like, can I keep affording to keep adding to these things or keep buying them? Um, is there going to be utility for the whole set or? Do you know what I mean? It just sort of brings that into question because initially we'd be like, we, I'd have bet anything that there was going to be utility for that set because it was like, we thought it was going to be like a one-time thing. I think. So I, I did personally anyway, which is why I was like, I was so confused. I wasn't confused, but I was just shocked that they that they that went the, the way they did. Um, I don't know what you guys think, but um, yeah, it just came as a bit of a surprise to me because I felt like that set was so special. To my understanding, Danny, I think um, uh, Vivi was also surprised. <laughs> Yeah, I saw that. Apparently, yeah. I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't think uh, they were anticipating doing this, but Disney was like, "No, let's do it," and they said, "Okay." <laughs> oh, really? What did they say? Yeah. I missed. I missed that. What did they say? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So Alex came out and mentioned in the AMA that they just came to them with the idea, or I think it was on Twitter. He came out <laughs> and said they they just came to them with the idea for doing a Valentine's Day because I, I think people were kind of a little upset by it because it came qu- so quickly. Um, I think it was mixed feelings because I think people were just so emotionally burnt out from trying to kind of like get all these other, these NFTs and probably, you know, a lot of them didn't get in and, and now they're doing really well. So they feel a bit salty about it. Um, but <laughs> so I think, I think it was a little too soon. I think there's a lot of PTSD going around <laughs> from the first round and yeah, people are, aren't ready for this one, but you know, I, I, I think right now too, we're seeing a lot more sellers than, than buyers. I think people understand the value of these now. And there's definitely a floor um, that people have in mind and they're not willing to, to part with them unless they get that floor. Cause if you look, man, there was like yesterday, there was a like 21.8 Ks for the Donald and Daisy statue. And then there's like 10 or 12, 1.3s. And then it just goes on and on, man. It, 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 it was like 30 statues to get to 2K. 
right. for Donald Daisy. It was crazy. Sam, uh, Sam, Ellis, uh, Sam uh, tweeted about this. He mentioned that the it would cost like $100,000 to get to 2K if, if that happened. And apparently, I mean, look at it today, and I think there's like 40 statues off the market. So somebody came in and definitely did some sweeping. <laughs> Wasn't me. <laughs> yeah. did, did you well, not buy any of those no no i've not bought nothing but i actually quite like that you've said <laughs> that they kind of came back in and and and, and did another one out just randomly because that just shows that they're clearly watching and they clearly care do you know what i mean so that's quite good especially if you think that if you're pinning your hopes on them, there's definitely going to be utility in the future then that's obviously quite a good sign they're still quite interested in the whole space um but again, it's, there's still tons of speculation going around, especially with utility and things like that. And I always say to people, if you're making love changing money, do never be afraid to take something off the table or even sell it in app. Because, you know, truth be told, we don't really know where everything's going to go in the future. And as you've seen already, they can bring out loads more golden moments at any point. They can bring out tons of stuff on the apps and then everything gets diluted at that point. So your 100K, your 100K golden moment might not be 100K anymore. It might be now 80K because there's loads of other things that people want to diversify in. So, you know, that's all you've always got to keep that in the back of your mind. I keep saying this to Danny because he's, he's in the position where, you know, he's made life changing money and he needs to consider now and weigh up the risks. Because before, truthfully, you didn't even have a risk, did you? You, you didn't, you know, you were just messing around with something that turned into something huge. And now you're playing with it, life changing money and you need to kind of, you know, weigh up the risks. Yeah, yeah I, I, pre I appreciate that. And I well, obviously we've spoke about it like in depth, uh, put, like together and it's, it's turned into something that I never, I, it's, I'm sort of trying to process it as I go along because it, say three months ago, I didn't know you, I didn't have any money. I just had like, it was play money to me, you know, and then it sort of turned into something overnight. And then it's like, shit, I could change my life with this money. Um, but I also like having low mint numbers that people think are cool. So I'm trying to, <laughs> it's, it's, Careful balance. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 it's, di it's difficult to uh to sort of make that, but yeah, it's I, I've got to, got to weigh it up at some point. But then I look to the future, and like you say, speculatively, what do I think these are going to be worth? And I actually truly believe in the, the platform and what what I've got is going to be worth money in the future. So it's where do I cash out too early or do I cash out some parts of it? And obviously, we haven't even got MTL yet, so we don't know what the future is going to hold. Um, but it would be, uh, like you say, wise to anyone that's got massive amounts of money to sort of lock in that profit along the way so yeah i completely agree with what you're saying and it's, it's still wise to as you've seen the second they bring <coughs> out something new you've seen the prices how much they go down so you can always sell and then rebuy back in like when mtl comes out because when yeah. mtl comes out when the second they actually say like this is the time we're doing mtl the prices are going to drop significantly yeah significantly and there's going to be an opportunity for people to buy back in and then they're probably going to you know start to go up again when everyone else from externally starts to buy in or if they release when they actually do release you've seen what this february 27th pokemon day has done to the market it's held <laughs> it back so what's going to happen when they do release pokemon i mean i don't believe they will release pokemon until um, until after mtl i think they'll keep that as like a dangling carrot which is you know so they should and i, I, I agree but i mean there's going to be a place to potentially rebuy back in and secure some profits, especially if you've made life changing money. I mean, even for me, I'm still, yeah. I'm definitely going to sell off things on, on the next pump uh, because, you know, I just want to sit in gems for, 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 for new drops. I don't want a drop to come and then I want to try and sell stuff off. I don't want to sit like that. Smart. Yeah, I've been holding off on all the most recent drops. You know, I, I haven't been getting any of them on the drop, and I've been holding off in the secondary market just because I, I know there's there's going to be a, a big drop inevitably coming with MTL. So I'm just I'm sitting, yeah. I'm waiting, and you know, the, there's definitely collectibles that that have come out in the past few weeks that I've wanted to buy, but yeah, I just, I just think there's there's gonna be a much better buying opportunity in the next few weeks. I think the, the time that we're going to see these collectibles really <laughs> pump again is lo when lo localization comes. I mean, we're definitely, I mean, that's going to be a really big deal. I don't think Pokemon is going to come until that is complete, Agreed. specifically with well, Asia and like China and Japan. Like, could you imagine them dropping Pokemon and not having the Japanese language on the app? Yeah. Like, what a big F you, right? Yeah. Like, that's, yeah. like, that's a straight up middle finger. It's like, <laughs> I don't see that happening. I don't see that happening. Like, if China like released some like NFT platform with like American football and like the NFL, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's all in Chinese. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
But yeah. you know, one thing that you guys bring up that I, th- I think is so important and like Lewis, you know, being such a savvy investor as well is like, you know, taking the profits and so many people look to me and are like, it's just going to keep going. Like, it's just going to keep going up. And I think that's one of the biggest misconceptions. And I think like greed plays such a big part in this. Like Todd went from $90 to 11,000. Like, you know, how much further do you want it to go? Like it already did a hundred X. Like, are you, okay, I need a thousand X before I, before I even consider it. Like, I mean, these are unrealistic profit margins like that have ever come out. Like these are some of the best, you know, exponentially gaining things in the world. I mean, so already we're at a point where things are saturated in a sense in terms of our current user base. So I just think, you know, that's a relevant point. And the other thing too, is like when we do see that MTL, some of these things that have high additions, like Elsa as an example, you know, those are the things that in my opinion would come down the furthest because there's so many more people involved in having those that they would sell them off more as like things that are like extremely low additions, like let's say Marvel comic one SR, you know, you might see a dip, but maybe not to the same extent as something that has way higher additions. So, you know, just a few things to think about, but I think those are are critical points because I I met a few people that think Disney golden moments are going to be like, you know, a $10 million set. And now that's already been kind of disproved with this new one coming out. Yeah. I don't think like, I don't think mint numbers are necessarily the thing that are going to be like the determinant of what's going to drop. I think it's more about popularity. So I think people are going to want to keep the things that they like at the end of the day, the collectors are going to keep the things they really love. Um, and I, I don't think it really necessarily matters about, you know, how, how many mints there are. Um, so, you know, if, if you have enough people who, who care about the Simpsons, then, you know, the, the price floor is, will stay, will stay up because they won't sell. Right. Shout out to your oh, defense. MC MC one is very popular. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that that is both going for it. Yeah. Right. But I think we like you. You make a great point. I think what really matters is like all those combination of factors. Is it popular? Is it a high edition count? You know, is it have potential utility in the future? Like, I mean, we might be thinking about Marvel One SR right now when really Spider Man two thousand ninety nine is like, let's just say the king of the Marvel Mighties game that VV releases in two years. And then all of a sudden that's the golden goose. So there's still so much to be uh, foreseen, right? It's also you know, speculative though, isn't it? So, sorry, uh, Sean. Um, it's, also, it's, um, yeah, because we're obviously the NFT game is so speculative anyway. And we're putting so much value on things that are speculative. We're speculating on speculation <laughs> that stuff is going to come out. You know, it's just like, we, no one's confirmed it. We're just guessing. And we're guessing on stuff that's worth a lot of money as is. And if that doesn't come out, you know, so I'm not just I'm not trying to create FUD or anything like that. I'm literally just playing devil's advocate as, 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 as people should um, just to bring it back to reality. Because like, obviously it's a it's massive amounts of money. So I generally think that utility will come out for, for a lot of these NFTs. And I, I 100% believe that, which is why I'm fully invested in like golden moments. And even bringing, even them bringing these out, I still think it's it's still going to happen to certain ones or if not all of them in some way. Um, I'm saying you, we're, you've got to remember that we're just playing a guessing game and it's, it's we're guessing on certain things that we don't know for sure. So just be careful. Yeah, no, I mean, to add to that, Danny, I mean, I, I'm so with you. I mean, it's, it just feels almost logical at this point. Like it would be a yeah. huge miss if Disney did not add utility to these golden moments. Yeah. You know, I mean, like I mean, another CEO came out in his first interview when he talked about his NFTs in the metaverse. He said that he, they were very excited about bridging the digital and physical worlds. And you know, he's already highlighted these these things. And not and adding the utility specifically to the park makes the most sense. Yeah. Because the advertisement, the low risk, high reward. Um, also, I mean, I, I think aside from the statues, we're going to see NFTs at the park. Like if you go on It's a Small World in Disneyland or Disney World, there's no one in line. Nobody goes on that ride. But imagine like these exclusive NFTs that you can get only within a certain radius of that, of that ride, right? So if you go on the ride, you can get an NFT. That'll add so much more value to that ride and for people to come and experience that ride. So it's a really cool opportunity, I think. And and even like today, I, I, or yesterday I talked about how, you know, these, these stat, the posters on Vivi have not done very well, but the ones, the posters I think will absolutely crush it would be the rides from Disneyland. There's, there's really cool classic Disneyland poster rides that you can get that are at the park and you can buy them and they're very popular. But imagine being able to own those and adding utility behind those as well. Like imagine having fast passes connected to those posters that you could actually use at the parks. Like that's awesome. 
or even like the opening day ceremony poster. There's a very classic poster of, of Disneyland when it first opened. Um, add in some type of utility there as well. I, I think there's tremendous opportunity and Disney's planning to do all of this. And I think it's, it's definitely their future. Yeah. And I, I think just like in general, it's frankly, it's just stupid for any of these brands not to add utility to these because they want to encourage people to trade and buy and sell these things in the secondary market. Cause every single time it, you know, it, it moves hands, they get a piece of it. So any utility they can add to it is just going to encourage more buying activity and means more revenue for them. And especially if they're able to do it in a way that's, you know, minimal impact, like it's, yeah, it's, it's a no brainer. Yeah, I hundred percent agree with that. And um, I, I definitely, I say I'm all in on the golden moments. Anyway, it's my favorite set since, since we first started. So it's just, I, if there was ever going to be utility for a set, I think it would have to be Disney because it just makes the most sense. And the fact that they've gone all in on the metaverse as well, like they've got their CEO and whoever I was talking about that they're saying, oh, we're really excited for the metaverse. Who's to say that their utility isn't, isn't pegged to their metaverse play. You could say, okay, well, if you own a golden moment, you could, your first refusal to the metaverse land or metaverse platform, you know, you're the first, do you know what I mean? Why wouldn't it make sense that you were the first person to buy our NFTs? You can have first refusal to our metaverse uh, land. You know, it's, there's so many things they could do. He could have virtual and, re and real utility, which I think is like, I think they're, I still think they're undervalued completely. I think they're completely undervalued considering how many billions of people in the world know what Disney is. And there's, okay, 10,000 sounds like a lot, uh, there or thereabouts but in the scope of the world it's ridiculously tiny and if we're saying that nfts are going to be mass adopted then there's it's a no-brainer these will be worth way more than they are right now in my opinion people are insanely obsessed <laughs> with disney collectibles like there was a, a dragon bucket this character's not even connected to the park and people waited four to six hours in line to get this popcorn bucket four to six hours and now they're going for like three hundred dollars on ebay people are crazy about disney collectibles so even aside from utility it's a very safe bet but like spencer said it's in their best interest to make these collectibles as valuable as possible and this is how they're going to do it to add utility behind it yeah and we've only discussed like i guess like brand powered utility but i think there's also something to be said about like community powered utility where you know people in the community can decide you know if you own this moment you get access to this discord server and you know you get insider knowledge you know based on whatever we're talking about or you know uh you can decide you know if you, you know if you own a business you know if, if somebody proves that they own a specific nft then you give them a discount you know for their bit yeah you know, there, there's so many things that people in the community can create uh, value for it for these things for as well which is a, another thing that i think a lot of people don't really talk about well, i just hopefully. saw something else i just i just saw something get rid of us what lewis said the imagine being able to rent the collectibles for the phys, for the parks too not just for the metaverse but also renting them to you access and use at the parks Right. That's also a possibility. That's a game changer as well. So I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, yep. no, I was, oh, oh, I forgot, what was I going to say? Uh, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right, because it's cheaper, right? Like, it's like imagine if you can rent the NFT for cheaper than it would cost to go to the park and get all these different passes and you know all these things imagine you have discounts on food all that stuff so it'd be like your, your nft could just be in constant renting momentum because mm -hmm. like we talk about there's hundreds of thousands of people probably daily um just in the states alone that are visiting disneyland disney world imagine worldwide it's probably a million plus so well, how, how about renting it out to like physical card companies like let's say you send a birthday card and you own that obviously you own the nft you can you can kind of rent it to a, a card company where they print it on the front of a card and you say like happy birthday you know what i mean like at this moment in time if if a card company wanted to use that and sell birthday cards they wouldn't be able to do it because obviously it's disney owned they would have to pay them so if we own the collectible do they pay us do you know what I mean? Little things like that. That's super cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think the, the thing is, the speculation is endless, and it's just obviously it's yeah. all great to talk about, but no one knows how it's going to play out, do they? That's the great thing. Like it's, it's which is great. Anything yeah. can work at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Anything. Can well, work. actually, Alex did mention in a in a tweet that they have a roadmap for these for these statues. He did mention that. And he also said hodl. <laughs> three times he said hodl. He's like hodl. He said three times. <laughs> yeah. And this is a response to the, the video that was released about that former executive like putting down the collectible, saying that they're like basically Happy Meal toys. Mm -hmm. um, it was zero understanding of where these could go and why the, why they made them. Um, and, he, and Alex is very defensive over it. <laughs> it was so great. <laughs> 
I think the Disney Golden Moment is definitely the best hedge, in my opinion, for sure. One of the biggest brands on there. It's definitely one of the, the yeah. best. It's the, one of the best hedges you can make, mm-hmm. uh, for sure. Something you want to sit sit long term. I'd agree. Just, just keep it. Keep it. In my opinion, keep a gold. Keep the golden moments. So. Yeah. Did any of you ever uh, cash in? I guess you were supposed to get like a Disney Plus subscription with, with those. Did anybody yeah, ever cool. like? I, I don't. I don't remember ever like hearing any instructions on how to how to redeem that or anything. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I didn't get one yeah. off the drop. So. Well, yeah, I've got um, yeah, I've got like, I think I've got like three or four years worth of Disney Plus. Unfortunately, there's no rollover, is it, Danny? <laughs> no, I know, but so you just have loads of accounts. Yeah, I've redeemed it. Yeah, yeah, I've redeemed. Oh, oh, Olivia got the wall. How, how do you do that? So it was for an email. They sent you an actual email linked to your Vivi account, um, and they sent you a code in the email. So uh, Olivia, my girlfriend, she got the Walt on the drop. So that was 12 months Disney Plus. So I gave one to my dad, gave one to my brother. Like just because we all got like, we, whenever we got them on the drop, we just sort of like gave them out. I thought, well, no one's used them. I gave them out to my friends. So we used the, the 12 month was the Walt, um, which we used for ourselves. And then obviously we just gave out the three month ones. So yeah, it was good. It was, it worked, it worked pretty well, to be fair. This is a really good point. And I'm really glad that you brought that up because I mean, look at that, right? So how many people actually used the utility behind it, but they're still excited about it and talking about it? So like mm. for the Walt statue, for example, if they say it came out tomorrow and said, everyone who has a Walt statue gets free access to every Disney park worldwide. How many people would actually use it yearly? Probably mm. not a lot. I mean, Dr. Profit has 250 plus alone. So like, <laughs> and, and also people are, just, are scattered around the world and it's not easy for them to go to Disneyland, but just saying that they have the opportunity to do that if they wanted is a huge deal. And I think that's going to be really, really attractive to a lot of people and they'll pay a premium for it. Right. And like you said, it's like holding that, even though you've never used it, it's such a flex. You're like, ah, I could go yeah. to Disney World if I wanted, but you know, I'm good. Like, it's just, who are you? Right. Like, and that's, <laughs> I think that like with the social capital element, like that's the kind of stuff that really is intriguing to people. And I think that's why I always like revert back to like a Todd as an example, because in the future, anybody that has one is going to be one or two things, either exceptionally uh, intelligent because they were here early and they were able to find this or exceptionally rich because they're able to buy their way in. And I think being perceived like that by, you know, um, people in the metaverse or a community at large is such a good thing to grow your following you know, to gain traction and to be considered like an expert in your field, so to speak. So I think there's, there, there's so much things like where it, it and then, the, and we keep forgetting there's already been utility. Like you, we talked about Disney plus, like that didn't even register. I'm like, Oh yeah, they did that. Or even the movie tickets, like they're giving us hints of the utility already. So, I mean, it's not as if this is, isn't coming. Right. The thing is as well, it doesn't make sense to make your product cheap. The more expensive, you, as you've seen with Board Out, CryptoPunks, the more expensive it is, it gets free advertising. Oh my God, look at this Board Out sold for you know 300K. All across these social media platforms. So to keep your company relevant and in the limelight, it's all about value. So make your product as it's more expensive. So, it, you know, it rises with inflation each year. It keeps on, it stays relevant. It keeps, you know, being at the top tier of NFTs. You'll get all the limelight on Disney forever. That's what I don't understand. So it makes yeah. sense that they would do that. But the thing is, when you involve in big corporations, big companies, everyone has to be on the same wavelength. That's the only thing. You might have one guy that might be on the wavelength of let's keep it expensive. But then you might have someone else that says, well, let's just keep, you know, bringing out more golden moments or, you know, let's just bring out loads of spin-offs off them. Do you know what I mean? So there's different avenues, different people take it. But to mm-hmm. me, the easiest way for free marketing, just make your product seem so sought after the price is so high that it gets shared across all these social platforms every time it sells yeah you see the um the 23 million pound the 23 million dollar crypto pump that sold last week like first thing i did when i saw it was i print screen and sent to you lewis i was just like this is literally the best free avatar imagine if a company like how many companies are buying board apes now or how many are are buying crypto because yeah it's how much they're paying for a advertisement tens of millions millions every single time like super bowl was like 50 million to for like 30 seconds or something ridiculous if you just had if you buy a board ape it's all free advertising because every single news outlet it's all oh my god how have they paid this much for a picture okay well it's free advertising for this company like nike bought a one board ape and got more press coverage than if they spent 100 million just it makes so much sense right. and, and talk about advertising yeah 
because the way that I see it too is like as much as these board apes and these crypto punks are like very you know uh, innovative and very important on the blockchain and, and do represent a great part of our history. I mean, we're also representing the biggest characters in history through VV and you know, some of the most iconic things in all of our history, like Superman, first most fictional character in the world, Mickey Mouse, second most, you know, popular fictional character. So it's like, we have those, like, I don't think people get it. Like, that's why whenever somebody tries to fund and they're like, oh, you know, there's so many carbon copies. I'm like, like, you know, Danny, like you said it earlier, man. 4,333 Mickey first appearances and waltz in the world, um, in the context of the world, is exceptionally tiny. Like Billy, like Bitcoin valued at whatever it is, 50 grand, there's 21 million Bitcoins and there's 4,333 waltz. And like the, my taking on the future of currency is going to be more expressive, is going to be more colorful. It's going to have emotional attachment. Like I feel like NFTs may actually represent a bigger thing than just being these NFTs. Like, what would you rather hold? Like Disney stock or like 30 waltz? Like I would personally rather the waltz yeah. if I knew that they they maintain that value. I'd rather trade waltz and do things like that than to hold just yeah. a bunch of coin. Super Even interesting. The market caps alone. Think of, um, sorry, Sean, this is, this is a little- No, no go ahead, Danny, go ahead. Is there this, if because we heard, what did we, Sean, I'm pretty sure you said last week, like you could potentially have fractionalized NFTs. Like- or someone said you can have like potentially end up being fractionalized. And who's to say they don't end up a currency? Because it's no different because they are non-fungible tokens. They are tokens at the end of the day. Like you could end up, who's to say that you use one percentage of a walt to gain entry to a Disney metaverse or something like that. You have to use that. And then the companies end up buying back their own walts. So there's there's so many, it's all speculation, obviously, but there's so many different things that it could happen. You know, it's um yeah, it's, it's, it, to me, I'd rather have the, the waltz and something that people are emotionally attached to. That there's where tokens and coins, you're not emotionally attached to them. Like, is, there's no yeah. emotional attachment. Yeah. So, like stock. You could potentially. I don't know. I can tell you, I've, I've gotten pretty emotionally attached to some investments that I should have sold. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I knew that. Yeah. Was. Successful ones, anyway. Yeah, I haven't had them yet. So I'm, yeah. I'm <laughs> It's interesting too with these NFTs because people hold such high emotional attachments. You know, unlike Spencer is attached to some of his crypto, but like <laughs> a lot of people aren't. Like they trade things daily, like they're just trying to make money. It's all about money. But these are like, you know, representing things from your childhood. And the, the yeah. issue that I have is people can take advantage of people's emotions by being like, oh, you know, this Darth Vader is coming out. It's going to be the best thing ever. And people are like, oh my God, like I grew up with this. And then meanwhile, you have these big investors that are just, boom, dumping them or whatever. Um, so that's the concern I do have as, as these characters are attached to currency, right? Yeah, so I was I wanted to talk about obviously the FE and the uh, Disney um, with Donald Duck and that because mm. obviously I ended up overpaying massively for the Donald Duck lenticular. I, I paid stupid money because I was like, these are going to be huge, that are FAs. Um, and like, even someone that's been in it since March, I still make huge mistakes. So, and I have made massive mistakes consistently. That's why I, I, you, you, if you end up making these many mistakes, you end up making some good ones. What are but... you talking about, bro? <laughs> <laughs> you went from like 10K to 500K. It's like, oh, this is like, yeah. yeah, like an absolute shite. <laughs> <laughs> but if you... <laughs> I've made loads of mistakes. That's why I've made so many. Like, I've made some good ones, but I'd be a millionaire. I'd probably be as rich as you if I carried on. <laughs> if I made no mistakes, so you know, it's just one of those things. But I feel like the Donald Fe plus Fa. I mean, I bought both of them because I feel like Donald and Daisy are still massive characters. Um, I don't know which one's going to have more value in the future. I literally don't know. So, what do you guys think about that? It's interesting, right? I think, you know, one thing that I was going to say is like, there's this whole argument that comes back to first on the blockchain. And then, you know, what is a first edition compared to a first appearance? And I feel like people see these characters, these statues as being the first appearance in their mediums. And that holds a lot of weight for people um, as like the art pieces. I, I don't know what it is. Like we've noticed that the attachment just isn't as strong so far. Um, that was kind of my take because and then I was talking to Reese about it, the same kind of thing. And he was like, well, people see it as different mediums. And there's some people that 
you know, don't know much about comic books and only collect statues and vice versa. So I feel like, like for me, I was surprised to see, you know, Donald Duck and Daisy at 1.9K and the Lady and the Tramp at 1.3 with the Lady and Tramp having, you know, significantly fewer mints and Daisy and Donald already coming out. So it goes to show you the, the power of popularity, I think, in this argument. Remember, Danny, people waited in line for four hours for a dragon bucket, a popcorn. Yeah. Like this, yeah. we're still so, like there's still we're on a small island right now, still, man. Like <laughs> people, these I think there's definitely enough space for both or opportunity for both of them to win big time. Uh definitely yeah. for sure. So I mean, these, at the end of the day, these are some of the first Disney collectibles in general, you know, regardless of uh, which you know, which one was technically first, they're both gonna just crush it, I think. Yeah, no, I hundred percent agree with that. And you because I spoke to you, Sean, because I was like, how much are these going to be? Like, we're trying to work out, obviously, together uh, where, when's a good buying point. Like, we all talk to each other anyway. But with the Donald and Daisy one, like, even though it's not FA, it's still a golden moment statue. And it's undeniably two of like the most important characters in the Disney universe. So I could potentially, like I said to, I think I said to you, Sean, I was just like, I, I can see these rivaling like Elsa eventually. I can see them rivaling... Like, I feel like it's going to take a matter of time, only a matter of time before people, depends which way they go, but I still see them. So obviously people are valuing them above the Lady and the Tramp, even though they're the actual first on the blockchain and there's less mints. So it's, the, it's obvious people are still making that connection there. So to me, I feel like that is a bit of a sleeper. I think people are going to sort of forget about the first mints, whether or not it was the cards or whatever. But I feel like the these could potentially have a big run up, you know, or just, just in my head, I feel like they could. You know, what's yeah. one thing we don't talk about enough sometimes is the target audience. Like I remember when I did some research on star Wars, it said the person that likes star Wars the most is between the ages of 25 to 40 and is white Caucasian male. And then they liked, uh, they were in the it sector generally or like a few other sectors and i was like well that's a lot of cryptocurrency guys there's like yeah. i don't know what the you know what i mean but like i would love to see the vb breakdown and be like well what are we looking at here like are we looking at you know like like all those factors and those little micro uh factors would play such an important role in determining what will hold value on vb specifically and i feel like that's we're making a lot of times presumptions on who's in this but like my wife for instance like you know she hates nfts and the only one she's liked so far was the pilly fantasy thing you know what i mean and she's like oh my god that's only 40 dollars, but you're paying three grand for this other thing like i hate that other thing give me that and she was ecstatic and i'm like okay like clearly there's there's something up here you know what i mean so that that is an interesting like i would love if vivi can release some more metrics on that i love the, I love the thing about vivi so much over anything else is you can easily explain. You can't really explain an NFT to people, even though it's something simple, you know, a digital, you know, something on a digital asset on the blockchain. But it's still really hard to explain and someone to get their head around. Whereas if you say, right, well, this is a, a collectible from Disney, the company, how much are you willing to pay for it? Like, it's an easy conversation. And yeah. from everyone that I've ever said, like, you know, go on VV, two days later, they're addicted. So that just goes to show the adoption rate moving forward as it fully does roll out. People are obsessed with VV. People will get obsessed with NFTs, but it's really hard for everyone to wrap their head around again. But as soon as you get on VV, you're actually buying a collectible from this company. Oh, right. Easy. I'll easily pay for that because they make 400 billion a year. So, you know, why am I not going to, you know what I mean? The market cap's 400 bill. So why am I not going to pay for again, a thousand pounds for a collectible? There's only one of 7,000. I think it's such an easy adoption rate, which is, which is good, which is why it really interested me. Interesting. And there's so much analysis to go around on VV, like you said, Lewis, like with a board ape, you either got one or you don't with VV, like you can contemplate, well, is this going to go up in value? What is, what do I think about this? Is this a character I'm familiar with? There's different fandoms. So like you said, there's like a hundred things more grabbing you to get involved. Yeah. And, you, and obviously there's only one, there's only like what you've got board ape and you've got how, how many board apes? 10,000 is there? 10, yeah. yeah. Then you've got 20,000 mutants in there. Yeah, 20, yeah, 10,000. So, so that's what I mean. Whereas, like, obviously, in VV, you've got loads of potential different wins coming in the future, which is good. There's loads of different ways to make money from very little money, especially flipping gems. As soon as they bring out like a Darth Vader or every 60 gems, you know full well already he ain't going to sell for 60 gems, he's going to sell for way more. So, as long as they keep bringing out things that captivate people and everyone's making kind of money, let's say, then at this moment in time, it's going to really continue to catapult. Um, 
So, you know, especially I, I, what do you think about the comparison with like Bored Out, CryptoPunk and, you know, the value in them versus the BV stuff? Because it's a hard conversation to have in terms of obviously people buy Bored Apes and CryptoPunks for clout, really. Like I've got this, it's clout on the internet. Do you know what I mean? And I've seen people, I think, I believe it's from this, they're kind of getting verified on Twitter from owning Bored Apes. Have you noticed that? I keep saying, or I keep seeing, sorry, all the time now, people with like Bored Apes and they're all verified. So I don't know if there's some type of partnership going on there or what's, what's happening. Maybe it's just famous verified people who are buying them. Oh yeah, potentially, potentially. But every time I look at their, 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 um, their Twitters, they're like young people. Well, it's like, it looks like young gamers. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So I don't know what's going on there, but yeah. What, yeah. What, yeah. What and you can you buy verified is- accounts though. So you can, people can buy verified accounts and if you've got enough money to buy a verified account, right. you can potentially buy a board eight. So yeah, that's a good it, point. Uh, it's, it's anything's for sale on the internet. You know, you can buy anything that you want, including verified Twitter accounts. But do you think that do you think any of the VV stuff can rival the prices of of board apes or crypto punks in the future? Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you're looking at like even just the market caps alone, the market cap for what board ape is around I think two to two point five billion dollars right now, and even Walt at a two hundred fifty thousand dollar floor would be around a one billion dollar market cap. So absolutely, there's plenty of room for these things to grow for the biggest IP of all time. Oh yeah, let's go. Yeah, I think so too. And I think the companies can provide utility that people can't. And that's mm-hmm. the one thing that I think we're let to be foreseen is like what we talked about is like people can do whatever they want. They can get together. Like Lewis, if you were with your friends, you guys could be like, all right, we're doing a yacht club. Then we're doing like this party here, but a company can be like, we're giving you free Disney park access worldwide. We're giving you discounts to every one of our partner stores. You know, the other thing that's interesting is what if all of a sudden partners on VV start you know, working together to offer different value. Like what if Marvel and Disney pair up as an example and then apply value, not just within Disney, but across different avenues or provide something that we can't even think about. So I think that would be to me, what would take these things over the edge uh, and, and get them into those huge, huge numbers. And I think the other thing that would make this insane is if it could actually be in cold storage, if it could be taken out and, and given your own unique keys. I, I don't think that's going to happen, but if it did, like if you can take out your secret or Spider-Man and lock it away in your bookshelf for 25 years, that to me would be like a definitely a million dollar NFT. Mm-hmm. It, you know what though, just to add to that, I mean, people, I know that, they, that it sounds very appealing. It's exciting to have actual like full control over it outside of the app. Man, I heard the story the other day. They gave me, a, <laughs> gave me nightmares. This poor kid was on discord and he owned a board eight. He's only 21 years old. Mm-hmm. And there was a link that was on discord and he just clicked the link. Somebody said, hey, check this out. He clicked it, and apparently it was a hacker. Stole his, his board ape from his MetaMask just by clicking the link. That was it. It's gone. He messaged the guy and said, please, dude, give, me, give it back to me. Like, it's all I have. The hacker replied, what happened today is a bit bigger lesson, and you'll have more value in that lesson than you'll ever have in this NFT. Like, what a piece of shit. Like, just terrible person. And that's terrifying, man. Like, and Vivi, though, if someone steals your stuff, they, it's a centralized system, so they can work on getting it back for you. You don't have that opportunity anywhere else. So, you know, think about. I, I love that point that you bring up because there's a factor of the decentralization that's really appealing that I do I, I do think has a lot of benefits. But then there's also a factor of centralization that's beneficial as well. Like, you know, perfect example is like right now, as you guys are all familiar with, is like these trucker protests in Canada. You know, it swings either way. People believe, people don't believe. But the bigger part for me is like, if we didn't have any kind of centralized system, like things would just be so, so chaotic, like people would do anything they want. And, and it would be like, well, what, how do you have some kind of, you know, authority or something there that governs, uh, you know, some of these things. And like what you said, Sean, about Vivi is like, that's kind of like, what you, I feel good at night going to going to sleep with like the Walt statue and knowing that I'm not going to be subjected to a link. And if I was, there would be a possible way of retribution there. And, and like, there's stories of that already, like a uh, Graba B who came on the show, talked about how he bought stolen NFTs. He didn't know it at the time, but he did. And VV reached out to him seeing that he was innocent and said, guess what? We're going to make this up to you and gave him NFTs that were VV NFTs. They're like, he had a number 15 Rizzo at one point, right? <laughs> like that's the kind of company that we're dealing with here. 
Uh, and so I think that that's a beautiful point you bring up because I, I, as much as the narrative right now is like decentralization, decentralization, you know, there is an aspect of this that's important. Yeah. To add to that, so, sorry, Spencer, go ahead. I was going to say, yeah, I mean, one of their, uh, I guess, solution to, to this problem is that there will be custody solutions as well. So you're going to see big companies that are going to provide custody services for things like NFTs and crypto, you know, almost like a, a crypto bank to give you a, a little bit of a better sense of security. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's, that's awesome. one, one way around it. Yeah, that we'll, we'll eventually get to. Great point. And what were you seeing, Chad, like sleeping, um, you sleep well at night knowing that you would own a wall because of the IP that surrounds it, right? It's safe. It's safe bet with with high with a high uh, opportunity for. Um, but at the same time, I, I feel good at night knowing that I have this leadership team from Vivi, you know, that's mm -hmm. running this company, and that's why I, I feel very confident about the collectibles that I have and knowing that they're safe because of the leadership team, because they are just incredible guys that really do have the best interest for the community. You know, and I, again, like there's been some hiccups along the way, guys, but that's still part of the process. I mean, this is this company has has blown up in a very short period of time. And but there it's it's all part of the process. But at the end of the day, they have everyone's best interest, in my opinion. Yeah. The hardest part for me to get my mind around around Vivi is uh, the fact that there's so many verticals and there's so many NFTs and there are all these different categories. And I keep thinking to myself, well, it can't all go up because the, like there's just not enough things, you know, not enough people to, to kind of uphold the value. But then I'm like, when I started thinking about it again, I'm like, well, it kind of has been and is, and it might just continue because they're taking the entire world of collecting in one platform, which has never been seen before. Mm -hmm. And that to me blows my mind because I'm used to Pokemon where like, it was just a few, like the Charizard and a few other ones that you had to be very mindful and, and, and calculated as to which ones you were picking. But now it's like, you know, I think I've said this before, but people were closing their eyes and everybody just did well. And I'm like, I just don't know if that's going to continue because there's a fandom for everyone. And, and maybe Vivi's monitoring these metrics in the background and, and adding that layer of collectability at all times. But like, what do we really think? Because I know Lewis talks about this a lot too. Like at some point, it just can't keep going up. Like, and that's the part that I'm like worried about. I'm like, it, it just doesn't make sense in my head, you know? That's the, well, no one knows. No one can predict the future. I say it all the time, like, speculation always runs ahead of value. You're never going to know, but you can look at it both ways. The more people that come in, the more they will want to buy the first editions and they'll pump money into that, do you know what I mean? So you can look at it that way, that way too. What, yeah, what's going to happen, right, when, so we can, we can, can, can we sell on OpenSea or will we be able to sell on OpenSea at some point? And if we can, how does that work with the marketplace? Like, if you, so if I sell like my Todd to someone else, but not on VV, how does that then buy from VV and give to the person? How does it work? How will that work? I sort of think that it will be because um, we're we're definitely on immutable, yeah. So we know that for a fact that we've been minted on the immutable uh, network platform, whatever. They've got their own marketplace, so I envision that we'll be able to transfer our NFTs from VV to the immutable network first. Um, sell them for ETH, sell them for OMI, whatever we sell them for. And then the person from that point on could potentially move them to OpenSea, uh, but they might lose the, the utility or they might use the 3D uh, or AR uh, ability to, to view them that, that you get with VV and, or, or Immutable. You might even lose that when you move them to Immutable. Yeah, that well, confirmed, or is that we may also see, I was going to say, we may also see um, OpenSea integrate Immutable X. Because they've already integrated Polygon, for example, which is another layer two on Ethereum. So it's very likely you like moving them to Ethereum or moving them to OpenSea is really just, it's just connecting your immutable X wallet to OpenSea and it'll all be integrated. So I think more than likely, that's probably how it's going to work on, on that front. That makes sense. Yeah. Same with probably Coinbase yeah. when they, because they're going to bring out their, their NFT platform, aren't they? Coinbase are. So I yep. Mean, yeah. Coinbase NFT similar. as well. Yeah. That would be similar, right? <laughs> Yeah, so any any exchange that wants to integrate Immutable X could potentially you could you could transact on. So would it leave the VV platform at that point? Yes. Yeah, and they did confirm that the first collectibles that will for sure leave the VV platform are the indie artists collectibles. So like Brian English and Jermaine Rogers, Frank Kozik, all the decon characters. So uh, when that announcement happens, because a lot of people don't know about <laughs> that. <laughs> and a lot of <laughs> yeah. wow. no, 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 I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> Are there any brands that will not allow it? So, like, you know, let's say Disney, for example, will they 
would that would they have to, they would have to sign it off i'm assuming right yeah to leave the vv mm-hmm. platform they may not actually allow that to happen it's it's all down to the license store right, yeah okay. they could and they could take all of them if they want if they want to leave because i was talked about this um he talked about this on a live twitter space he says if disney wants to leave they can leave tomorrow oh, well, i said the contract when their contract's up they can take out all the stuff and leave if they want but you know do they want to I, I don't see why they would want to considering the success that they're having right now you know it's only going to get bigger from here Mm. But what does that mean for, say, hypothetically, they did say, all right, we're packed our bags up, we want to leave. Do Who owns, obviously, Disney own that IP. Does oh, yeah. that mean that if they decide, right, we're done with VV, they have a fallout of VV, they can then take their NFTs off the VV app, irregardless of who owns them, or does the ownership get then moved to whatever platform Disney wants to move them to? How does that work? VV has no ownership over the, over the NFTs. It's all, all the license stores. So it's, it's, they're, they have full well, well, technically, the users have ownership of the NFTs. Oh, the, sorry. The, the, well, the licensor just has control, control of the IP Apologies. and what can be used for. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what I meant. Sorry. So, yeah. Thanks for yeah. correcting that. Um, yeah. But yeah, so, they could. They could... So, well, that means that, based on what you're saying, that the, if, say, Disney say, right, we're not affiliated with VV, hypothetically, we're making our own NFT platform. You own a, you own a Disney NFT. But we've made our own platform. You can now we're moving all these over to our platform. You have to now access our user base to access your NFT. Is that is that what you're saying? Yeah, I mean, it yeah. depends how they set it up. I mean, it's like if, if their their platform is decentralized, um, then all all it is to connect to their platform is you know you just connect your MetaMask and your NFTs are in there, and then you're able to use them. Um, mm. But if it's a centralized platform like VV then you'd basically like have to move your assets off of VV to a decentralized network and then from a decentralized network, go back into a new centralized one. Um, so yeah, that's probably, that's how I envision the process would probably go yeah. if, if something like and, that were to happen, but yeah, probably not. I wrap my head around this all the time because it's just like what happened with Disney when they had their own content, right? They started off at Netflix and they eventually they, they opened up Disney plus and just did it themselves. Mm-hmm. But a metaverse, man, that's a whole different ball. That's a whole different ball game, right? So if that does happen, if they do decide to do their own thing eventually, and we're talking probably five plus years at least away, minimum, you know. And and Vivi's already working on this, and apparently they're maybe a year away from it. So I fully expect them to be involved with Vivi on this, and I think yeah. it's just in their best interest to do that. Why, why would you not want to be involved in the, like the go-to metaverse on the entire internet, right? Like even like if Pokemon does come to Vivi. Can you imagine the amount of people that's going to bring coming to the app? And I, I know they'd rather be a part of that experience than compete on their own separate thing, in my opinion, at least. But I think there's enough room for, for everybody. DC knows that. <laughs> DC and Marvel are rivals, and they're on the same platform exclusively. That's wild, guys. Except one yeah. gets way more licensed than the other. But... Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, it, you know, that's what I'm hopeful for. I'm hopeful for these NFTs being, you know, the number one company in the world for blue chip NFTs that are interoperable between different metaverses. That's that's the long-term vision that I have for Vivi as being that, you know, major partner across all these different metaverses, not just, you know, staying within this app. And I know, I know we're still in the humble beginnings, but that's the way that I've always envisioned it. And I've always envisioned somebody walking around in a secret rare Spider-Man suit as an avatar in the metaverse and people being like, holy shit, you know, the equivalency of being like, I saw a Bugatti today. I, you're not going to believe yeah. what I saw today. Do you see <laughs> that, that's the way that I see it, right? Like, I'm hopeful that's the, that's the case. Mm-hmm. Well, David, you even talked about the OMI utility, right? They want to use the OMI token on different, uh, different companies and different platforms. So if they're thinking about that for the OMI token, you know they're thinking about that for the NFTs, but it really comes down to the licensors at the end of the day because that's what's in their control, but the OMI token's in their control. So they are, but they, they definitely want that to happen, I think, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. And you know what's amazing is like when you think about any major brand in the world, you're like, wow, they have like hundreds of partners. So, and it's like, man, like Vivi has Disney, Coke, Marvel, DC, Givenchy, and you're like, holy, like this is crazy, right? And my buddy the other day, he keeps talking about the snow globes. He's like, Coke, man. He's like, it's a huge industry. Like, it's bigger than Disney. He's like, what are with these snow globes? And I'm like, well, in my opinion, I'm like snow globe collecting, especially Coke, is like a physical collector and they're generally older and it's usually like antiques. And I'm like, 
don't be wrong. Like, I don't know where the snow globes are going to go, but there's just something about these globes, despite the size of Coke that I just can't, I'm not interested. Like, you know what I mean? And like, even if they did run, <laughs> I don't want one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the Coca-Cola brand, I mean, it's, it's, it literally actually is one of the biggest collectibles in the world. I mean, their vintage stuff is very collectible and so is their holiday stuff. I mean, the Coca-Cola is basically, they're credited for the re- uh, reimagining of Santa Claus that we know today. They didn't create the Santa Claus that we have in today, but they reimagined and branded his character um, for what we know today. And that's a huge deal. I mean, it shows the impact that this company has or, and has continued to have on, on the world. Uh, and aside from their first initial one of one drop, these are the first NFTs to open to the public. I mean, unless you, you know, you have millions of dollars to spend on these on that one of one of one package, these are technically the first Coca-Cola NFTs. Yeah, the first like collectibles. The yeah. I feel like I, I right. almost consider the yeah. previous one like more like an art piece or something like that because it's it's not, yeah, it's not it's not like a big commercial collectible. Mm. Yeah. So I don't need them, by the way, full disclosure. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's still high though. Yeah. Hey, well, look. <laughs> yeah, we actually bought them at the same well, time, didn't we? Wait, <laughs> Danny, show us yours too. You got it out, right? Let's see the blue Todd. I haven't seen that yet. In, uh, no, I haven't even, so even opened mine. Yeah, Lewis hasn't even opened it. Oh, you got one too, Lewis? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, no, we, bought, we bought them off the same website at the same time. Wow. Um, mine's what? number 202. Uh, Lewis hasn't even opened his yet. So this I is like a lot of I'm going to open it right now. Hang on. <laughs> 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 I haven't even checked awesome. what the number it was. I, I totally forgot about it. Today. If it's seventy-four, uh, then which one is this? Is this the? Um, <laughs> oh, it's, it's the blue. Okay. Yes, yeah, so this is the Japan uh, Japan variant. There's only five hundred. Yes. There's only five hundred in the world, right? Yeah, there's only yeah. there's only five hundred. That's right, Danny. Right. It so, was crazy, like connecting yeah. these things, man. Like connecting yeah. the mint numbers, the physical and digital. Like how big of a deal that's going to be. That's a huge yeah. deal. I, I can see that these these things for selling for premium, like sub 100. So what you have, Danny, if you can get a 74 physical yeah. and match that and put that on an mm-hmm. auction, dude. Whoa. Someone matched one today. Yeah. So someone in uh, that was wild. today saw match. The, he's got the number 98 told and he matched his name Cerebro Vintage. Shout out to that guy. Um, he matched today the 98 Todd physical with the digital version. So that's the first sub 100. Wow. Wow. Physical digital version I've heard of. What, what is it, Lewis? Let's see. Guess what is number it, it is. <laughs> like, if, it, if it's 74, I'm literally number one right now. <laughs> if I guess right, do I get it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 326. That's my guess. Guess the number. 326. Oh, what? Huh? 400, 460, 462. 65. 134. So 500. What number is it? Well, yeah. So, what? 402. I'm going 134. 326. 65. <laughs> 73. It's oh. one away from one. Oh, no way. <laughs> no, you're joking. Show me. Show me. Uh, 70, 70. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, that's man. bullshit. Because you guys have 72 and 74. Wow. Mate, I've got yeah, 74. Got- no, 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 no. I've got 72 Todd. He's got 74, and I've just got a 73 actual Todd. So I'm going to have to swap no. now. My 72 yeah. for a 73. Wow. <laughs> That's actually That's fucked epic. up. <laughs> <Believe that. laughs> so bad. Because <laughs> oh, some other guy had the 70. There's a guy that's got the 73 Todd black as well. Because like, he, oh, he tweeted cool. me he saying, I've got the number 73. Oh, is that the guy that tagged me and you in that post today? Nah, so he, he's got the 98, but someone tagged me and you in one a couple of weeks ago. He's got the 73 black one. Jeez. Oh, match up so, the black and the blue. Wait, that's so mad that you've got 73. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what number was yours? Mine's What's my number. So mine's 202, but we ordered it from the same place, right? Yeah, yeah. How'd you feel that I've got 73 and you've got a <laughs> <Yeah>. 201? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm just fuming that it's it's neither of our numbers. It's like oh, how is that even, it's, we've you've got the seventy two and I've got the seventy four. How is that even right? That's so weird. And I've been I've got seventy three. That's pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> we'll have, cool to, have to find that one now. And then you guys have it lined up like seventy two blue Todd and then seventy four like in a line. Yeah. <laughs> wow, oh, that's crazy. That's pretty cool. <laughs> 
the unboxing on stream as well. That's it, right? yeah. Yeah. You know, there's a, a there's a Facebook group uh, that started about con uh, connecting the physical and digital collectibles. So I'll keep an eye out on that, guys, and uh, see if I can find your numbers. Yeah. <laughs> How sick is that, though, in blue? That's so sick. Wow. That's amazing. Especially if it's only yeah. 500, you know? Like, yeah, it's crazy. It, yeah. It's, to it's, me, there's, it just feels there's like, more. They have what, to take uh, off. I mean, these what, things are what, so what, sick. What material are they made out of? It's, it's clay, solid. Right? It's like... Uh, I think it's no. clay. I think it's clay. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I think it's it is clay. Solid. Yeah, it's proper it's solid. Yeah. It is Heavy. it they're really well made. Um but the Rizzo's uh, yeah. not made very well. The the Riz the Rizzo's much like this is heavy. I'd say this is like I don't know, a kilo maybe, maybe a bit more. Whereas that's like I don't know, the Rizzo's like real 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 light, real cheap. Because mm. it's FE. <laughs> 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 Sorry to any holders. <laughs> I'm on You've got most of them, mate. I know I'm pissing <laughs> on my own fire. <laughs> so sick. Uh what what number is your black one, Danny? So mine is mate, watch me drop it now. <laughs> Four seven seven six, so Okay, so there's Nothing probably somebody out there with that. Yeah, well, if anyone's got one, hit me up. Yeah, the price has just it. gone up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, these are flying now. Um, How much you worth? 500k? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, that's on VV Vault. It doesn't mean 500K anything. 500k gems. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah, so someone will comment in the below. Someone comment below. That's worth like 50 quid. So it won't come Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Well, congrats on uh, 73. I mean, it's, it, I, I can't believe how much of a punch in the stomach that is though. Like yeah. one away either that of close. your minutes. That's crazy. If, I, if that was 74, I would have fell off the chair, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was mine. Oh, nuts. <laughs> Yours is 72. What? Sorry, I so, can't hear you down there. What, what you and two yeah, of you? Yeah, <laughs> So I'm curious. <laughs> Danny, if you got so Lewis, if you got the seventy four, Danny, that's your mint, right? Seventy four. Seventy four is mine. Yeah. Would you have sent him the the collectible, Lewis, or would you have ordered him to give you the uh, NFT? <laughs> we would have had to do rock paper scissors. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we would have had to do rock paper scissors. To be so fair cool. though, nah. To be fair, I probably would have sent it to uh, sent it to Danny because he's helped me a lot. So I would have given it him. To be fair, if it was his number, I would have given it him. I oh, appreciate that, mate. Cheers. If, if it was the other way around, I probably wouldn't have done so. <laughs> <laughs> he, just, he, he, he opened the box with a Lamborghini key, so what can you do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, well, what a, what a great chat today, guys. I mean, you know, I think it was, it was awesome, it was explorative, a lot of great conversation. A lot of interesting things, especially at the beginning with like FEFA and, uh, you know, and a little bit of fun, I mean, with the, the opening of the physical. Yeah. So, um, so let's continue this, man. Like uh, these conversations, I think, are what people want to hear. Like nobody can VV and chill with their wives, you know what I mean? Or there's some <laughs> of their friends that are in the real world. So this is where this is where all these, you know, intricate conversations are, are going to happen. And uh, if you haven't checked out, um, you know, Comics and Crypto, uh, their podcast yet, I mean, some amazing, amazing stuff that they're doing. Um, obviously, you know, you can check in to see every comic book's worth. Um, and then, uh, Lewis also has his own podcast, which has been incredible. And I know you've been exploring some stuff in the metaverse Lewis recently, which has been really cool and insightful for people. And then make sure to follow Danny on Twitter. Uh, you know, he's uh, an up and coming superstar and, uh, man, you're catching up to my followers and, and comics and cryptos already passed me. And I, 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 I pretend not to be jealous of those things, but I'm like, <laughs> All right, Danny, I'm like, that was a good tweet. Like, like, let me think of something now. So you guys are all pushing me forward, man. <laughs> If anyone's curious on Danny's journey, um, we're going to do a podcast, aren't we, Danny? I'm going to go through your whole journey and, and, and we're going to go from like, how it feels to, to be where he is today, even though he feels exactly the same, but he's made yeah. a hell of a lot of money in gems per se, but, you know, which crazy amount. So we're going to go through his whole journey. So that'll be a good good thing to, uh, to watch. Uh, uh, suggestion as well for next time, Chad, is it worth putting up... Um, uh, tweet before and get loads of people to to kind of tweet comments or write and comments so we can go through you know I don't know highlights questions that are on there or you put some some type of poll up or whatever and we can we can answer questions that people want to hear 
That's a great suggestion, Lewis. A hundred percent. I think, um, you know, especially if we, we, we kind of cement the time and we can do it every two weeks or something, then people can get ready. And, and like you said, submit their questions. So it's not us trying to predict what you want to know. We yeah, actually yeah. will know. Yeah. Because you're, right. they're, they're all ask relevant questions and it's easy for us too because, you know, every every few weeks it's hard to keep coming up with not talking about the same stuff but still talking about the same stuff. But, you know what I mean? So that be <laughs> yeah. 100%. All right. Well, thanks so much, everybody, for being here. And, uh, yeah, we'll see everybody soon. Yeah. Thanks, guys. It's a pleasure, gentlemen. Take care, guys. See ya.